Florin comes into your windmill. He says, Get up, lace bones! And he holds a golden plate. And on the plate is a pile of sausages and a pile of pastries. And he holds in his hand a cup of tea, offering it to you. Incorrect. Zero. Pink. Fellas, you know what time it is? Is it time for Dungeon Dads? It's time for the Dungeon Dads. <laughs> Incorrect. Zero. Pink. Pink. He will rise. He will fall. Hey everybody and welcome back to the podcast. You are listening to the Dungeon Dads and as always, I'm your DM, Tom Blaylock. Welcome to season three, fellas. Yes. Woo! Oh man. Correct. Uh, three. <laughs> pink. We're all, all Red? of our gears are turning right now on that intro. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. They have should no idea be. What, what to make of that. All of a sudden they we've sh- become Mr. Robot. They should be. <laughs> um, uh, before we get right into it, um, guys, as always, I am joined by John Watson playing the uh, the wizard Iona Silhavine. Welcome, John. Uh, thank you, man. It's good to be here. Season three. I'm oh. amazed and I am just humbled. Uh, me too. <laughs> me too. I cannot wait to get into this today, especially. Uh, Tim Carr, who's playing the the, the warlock Filnir Omajara. Greetings and salutations, listeners. lovely to have you back hopefully you're all caught up i don't i I, you know part of me wonders if we should have like a uh first and second season recap episode for new listeners but hopefully they just went back and listened to it all to hear all the drama and all the ups and downs you know during our off season uh which is like all of six days (laughs) between taking the time and 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 just slam all all 52 episodes one more time i think Um, we're over 72 hours cumulatively i know it's crazy it's a lot wow it's a lot of infotainment yes (laughs) (laughs) and we're also joined by sam frank playing the uh the war priest abel rock brother slash snowflower what's up sam to everything there's a season man turn turn i'm ready <laughs> okay um i want to get right into it guys can we can we start yeah. off uh, did you unlike the yourself? first two seasons i already did yeah man okay good okay i missed uh, it. like uh, unlike did the first two seasons thing? Thing. yeah i introduced everybody <laughs> sam thank you uh, <laughs> uh, unlike the first two seasons i want to start this one at a breakneck pace <laughs> 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 all right all right you're in your windmill and florin gershon comes in and he's holding a tray it's gold and on it are plates one plate has sausages one plate has a pastry and one plate is just a saucer with a cup of tea he's holding three plates yes the three of you wake up after your adventure in the center of the earth in Ehi's temple. Hey, hey, fellas, get up, you lazy bones. Uh, uh, Flaunt, is that you? Uh, uh, Phil near. Uh, and he yeah. presents you the tray. Uh, how did we get here? And he just holds the tray to you. Um, I'm starving, and I grab one of the sausages off the... the plate <laughs> okay not, uh, i don't feel myself yet um, and phil Nair will take the cup of tea okay i'm i'm assuming i'm up in the loft <laughs> I'm like, uh, no but- you're you're on the ground you're sleeping on the ground abel is actually on a um on the the hammock that's stretched across Filner is in like a like a lounge chair right next to to abel it looks like he has been reading the two of you a story like a bedtime story and you have fallen asleep on the ground ah. ow oh, that wasn't very comfortable how flown how did we get back here and he presents to you the tray 
that's that's nice. How did we get back here? And he just presents you the tray. Uh, I'm going to summon Kegaset. No, you're not. It's my packed blade. It doesn't appear. H- have I taken a bite of the sausage yet? Uh, I'm mm. beginning to have second thoughts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Florin, you're acting kind of weird, man. Ionis, do you take something from the tray? I, I don't. Okay. Ionis, what is the last thing you remember? And you all wake up and you are in your windmill. And Abel is in his hammock and uh, Ionis is on the floor and Filnir is sitting in a lounge chair. And Florin opens the door and says, Get up, lazy bones. And he walks over to you with a tray. And there is a, a plate with a pastry and plate with a stack of sausages and a saucer with a cup of tea on it. Oh, I do not like this. Do, do we remember? Does, is this loop, does it switch our brains or do we remember what just happened? You remember everything. Florn, how long have we been here? Phil, near. And he presents the tray. I try to summon Kegaset again. Okay, a sword appears in your hand. Um, what size of a sword would you like it to be? Do you want it to be a two-handed sword, a glaive? No, a uh, long sword. A long sword. And a long sword appears in your hand, and it has the poem written on it that you heard in the cave, in the temple. Uh, and he presents the tray to the three of you again. F- Florn, what, what kind of tea is this? Have a sip. You won't tell me the type of tea first. Perhaps it is not to my liking, and one of us might like it better than me. And he turns to you, John, and he, uh, Ionis, and he presents the tray to you. All right. Um, This is probably going to do nothing, but I'm just going to make a general arcana check on Florin and the stuff. Okay. That's an 18. Okay. Um, The items that are being presented to you are not magical. Florin is not magical. Florin... And Florin turns to you, Abel, and offers you the tray. Where are we? Zero correct, pink. And you wake up, and Florin walks into the room holding the golden tray, and there's a pastry, a plate of sausages, and a cup of tea. And he says, get up, Lacey Bones. Ionis, is this some kind of game? I, I don't know. It appears we're in some form of loop, but... It looks like each of the things on this tray are things that we each like. Last I remember, we we were in the inner sanctum of Ehi. I I remember speaking speaking with her underwater. And that's the, and the oh, oh 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 oh. And I grab my uh, I try, I grab for my wand. Yeah, your wand has the writing on it. Is my is the blade with me, or do I have to summon it again? Uh, you, it's not with you. It's not with me. Is the, if I check the poem, Edgar, or sorry, not the poem, if I check Edgar's letter, is there writing on that? That's other than, other than what should be there. So you, you are, uh, your pack where the, where the letter would normally be, mm-hmm. uh, is nowhere in sight. Uh, um, Phil here? Let, and let me Florin let, presents the tray to you again. Can I smell the pastry? It smells delicious. It smells like better than anything you ever cooked in your entire life. But I don't recognize it. No, it is not the cream puff of Neverwinter. This this must be some kind of test or trial or another challenge Ehi has set before us. Well, it looks like these are these things that we've like in the past, I'm going to reach for a sausage. Okay. I'm, I'll reach for the tea. I will okay. take the pastry. So are you going to eat them and drink them? I'm going to eat. 
I, I wait to see if anything yeah. bad happens. To <laughs> so watch what happens to sausage. our sausage. The sausage burns your tongue and disappears. So it's gone from my hand. Yep, and there's no more sausages on the plate. Hmm. Flon, what what is this trickery? Phil near, and he holds out the tray to you again. Very well, I'll sip the tea. All right, and you guys see that there are holes in in Abel's cheeks, and as he drinks the tea, he cannot quench his thirst, and water, the tea, spills from the sides of his cheeks through the holes, and the saucer on the tray disappears. I don't like this at all. You have holes in your cheeks like a sieve. Uh, I suppose this is some sort of dreamscape. I'll take a bite of the pastry. And it turns to dust. And two doors swing open. There's a north door and a south door. And Willem the Wet appears from behind a tapestry. And he walks up to Florn Gershon and he slices his throat open and water gushes from it. And Willem smiles at you and then runs out the north door. What is going on? This can't be real. Why is Willem Searchlight here? He's not. Have you ever known a man to bleed water? It's, it's all strange, but I don't understand what Willem has to do with any of this. Well, he, he may what? be a Who? metaphor. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. You were not there. What? In the tower. After you jumped off the tower, after you went up and down, we confronted Willem. He was in the tower. Willem is not Willem. Do you remember Abel telling us that Grumsh should be the one in the stone? That he walks the earth. I, I do remember that, yes. Well, apparently he is Willem. We don't know if he's always been Willem, if he's taken the form of Willem, if he's somehow possessed him, or if this is just always the way it was. But at the very least, last time we saw Willem, well, there was a, there was a little more to him. One correct, pink, and you wake up and Florn comes in with a tray and he offers you the sausages and the pastry and the tea. Hey guys, get up, lazy bones. I'll grab the pastry, take a bite. Turns to dust. I, I drink the tea. Spills through the holes in your cheeks. All right, I'll try the sausage one more time. All right, and it burns your tongue, and the two doors swing open, a north door and a south door, and Willem the Wet appears from behind a tapestry, and he slices Florin's throat, and water gushes from it. He smiles at you, and then he runs out the north door. We're players in a some kind of a masquerade here. I think it's we have to play our parts and see what wisdom might be revealed here. And I'm going to chase after Willem. Yeah, I'll go with him. Out the him. north door. And summon my sword in the meantime. Grumsh, is that you, or are we in the mind of Ehi? <laughs> and John, what is uh, Ionis? What do you do? I, I'm going to slowly walk toward the door because I'm still stunned at this new information, and I'm going to I'm I'm just going to I'm going to see if I can bring Saber to me. One correct, Pink. You wake up, and Florin comes in. With the tray, sausage, pastry, cup of tea. Hey, Lay's Bones! God damn it! I'm gonna run to the north door and eat a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna summon Kegaset. Okay. Take the pastry and stand in front of the tapestry with an attack readied. Okay. Uh, dust burns your tongue. Drink the tea. Drinks tea, spills out of your cheeks. Will in the wet appears. Uh, uh, he walks over to Florn. You can take your attack. No need to roll. And you wake up. One correct. Pink. Mm. Florn comes in. Hey, Lace Bones! Trey. <laughs> tea. Pastry. Through the holes. Uh, 
sausages. Right, John One said correct. pastries. <laughs> One correct. Pink. You wake up. Hey, Lazy Bones. T. Shit. <laughs> pa- sausage again. Yeah, sausage. And then Sam, what did you do? Pastries. One correct. Pink. Hey, Lazy Bones. <laughs> I like tea, fellas. God damn it. <laughs> I'm drinking this goddamn tea. Can, can we can we all take a sip of the tea? Flon, you must not stand there. Lazy bones. No, we, must... we we can't. Filnir, I don't believe we can alter these events. We we have to figure out what our part to play is here. Maybe we go through the south door after Willem runs through the north. I believe so. Okay. Well, I should say that seems like the next most obvious course of action. Pastry. Dust. Sausage. Burns your tongue. I know you love those sausages, I honest. Don't <laughs> pretend like you don't. <laughs> Did you do tea? Yeah. Yeah, through the holes. Willem bursts in from behind the tapestry, slices Florence's throat, water gushes from it, smiles at you, and runs to the north door. South door. We run through the south door. All three of you do? Together. Together. One correct. Pink. Uh, <laughs> lazy bones! Tapestry! <laughs> Abel, your beef is with Willem alone. Perhaps oh. we try. We split this time. Okay. Around. All right. All right. All right. Yep. Uh, I I already don't like this. I drink the tea. I again. don't like it either. But we're not getting anywhere. Sausage, pastry, burns, dust, holes. Willem comes in, slices throat, water spills out. I out the north door. I follow him through the north door. You guys do what you think is best. <laughs> <laughs> we'll think of something. Uh, I'll open the south door. It's already open. You can you okay. can walk out. Of what it, do I see? So when you look out the south door. Uh, you see it's certainly lake and hearth, but different. It seems to be wooden planks all over the place, almost like a, like a boardwalk. Oh, it's flooded. I honest, this is perhaps we're in Ehi's vision of some sort. This is, look, there are boards to, make paths to walk on shall we go, go through the south. Let's, I'll go out the south door John um cast fireball no I'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm gonna look at Florin interesting yeah he's dead uh and and everything that should be blood is water um, nothing on him. Nothing. nothing coming out of his throat except water. Except water. Wh- what do I see out the north door? I'll get to you in a second. All is, right. is is there a window? Uh, no. All right, I'll follow Phil there. One correct. Pink. Hey, fellas, ladies, bones, get up! Oh, <laughs> uh, what did you guys do? <laughs> I was chasing after Willem, and now I ended up back here. You must have messed something up. Well, I'm not sure chasing after Willem accomplished anything either, to be fair, but I have another idea. I'll eat the pastry. Dust. Tea. Holes. Burns your tongue. Willem comes in, slices throat, runs out the north door. Do I have my quarterstaff? Uh, you do, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm going to touch Florn with the quarterstaff. <gasps> oh. Feel there, feel there, feel there. It, 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 you, 
you got to do what you're supposed to do, man. You got to do what you're supposed to do. It's what you would do. Right. What I would do. Oh, wait. wait do we hear this when he's... Uh, no, it's only Phil near. Yeah. Tell Abel to hold tight. And Ionis. You know, he's afraid. Afraid of what? Everything. Yeah. I was hoping for something more specific, but <laughs> you know, you're true. You speak true. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go through the north door and on my way out and say, you stay here. Don't be scared, Jonas. Okay. I'm uh, chase after wait. Willem. No. You're going to chase after Willem? <laughs> I'm chasing after Willem. And I told you to stay here. Okay. And then what are you going to do, John? Um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stay there. Two correct. Pink. Hey, fellas. <laughs> Now wait a second. If if I'm supposed to do what I would do, how can what I think I would do be wrong? <laughs> Put yourself through the lens. I mean, if it was what I would do, it's what I did do when I didn't know I was supposed to do things. Fair point, but I don't know who makes the rules here. Well, Abel, you you are you are. A cleric, yes? Most days. Perhaps leaving a wounded behind is not what you're supposed to do. Oh, yeah, fair enough. I guess the water was sort of a distracting thing to me. Maybe I gotta I gotta get more into the moment. Really, really play play my part. Play along. Um Okay. I, one thing I know for sure, I'm drinking this tea. <laughs> Holes. <laughs> Pastry. Dust. Sausage. Burns your tongue. Willem comes in, slices throat, runs out the north door. Can I try to cast healing word on on Florn? Okay, so so Abel stays and casts healing word. John, what do you do? I run from danger out the south door. Three correct. And you arrive in the town square. Uh and it is it is clearly Lake and Hearth. Uh, but it is all built up on wooden pylons and people are gathered around cheering as though watching sport. They cry and they cheer and do not seem to notice you at all. They look at the, they look down in the center of the town and you can see a long path of fire, an equally long, dark black void and a path full of bodies. Are we all we're there? together again? All three of you are there. Yes. All right. Okay. Okay. And the bodies do the bodies lead a particular direction? They're basically three parallel lines in the middle of the town square, and it looks like people are watching and cheering these lines. So they're cheering at a pile of bodies, basically? A pile of bodies, a long black void, and a and a and a a path of fire. Now, if I was going to do what I would do in this situation, it would be to turn around and walk the other way. <laughs> do we know, do we have a sense of where we came from or we're just here? You're just here. But I feel like, uh, sad as it is to say, I feel like each of these is meant for one of us. And sadder Absolutely. to say, I think I know which is which. I think that's quite apparent, which is which. I'll walk to the black void. I, I walk to the pile of bodies. And I walk through the fire. Okay, so you guys stay on the edge of the of these paths. To, are you going to go mm -hmm. on them? Are they flush to the surface of the ground? So the fire is about three feet high and goes about 100 feet long. And it's about five feet wide. Uh, the black void is about... 10 feet high and five feet wide. And then it goes about a hundred feet. And the bodies are, um, they're sort of, they're writhing. Actually, they're moving. Uh, you can see that when you, when you get there. Um, uh, hey, Phil, you want to trade? 
<laughs> well, we might have an opportunity for that. Let's stick with our instincts for this one. I look around at the crowd like, is this what you want? You want me to climb over all of this? <sighs> They're just cheering. They, they, they do not seem to be making eye contact with any of you, though. It's almost like they cannot see you at all. Just video game cheering noises. Basically, yes. Oh, I'm gonna step. Great. I'm gonna step into the black void. Okay. For a moment, you hear a gristled voice praying. John, what do you do? Uh, I'm going to reach my hand out and see if I can manipulate the fire at all. You cannot. I'm gonna touch it. It does not burn you. I'm going to walk through. And as you walk through, you see a very small person, uh, halfling size, on fire, and he turns to you. And I, uh, hello? Who are you? What's happening? And he holds his arms out. Just just as if for me to grab them? Yeah, sort of like an embrace. I reach down to hug him. And he clasps you in his arms, and you feel your health regenerating. Uh, Abel, what do you do? So this path of bodies, is it like just a bunch of bodies laying on the ground? And they're writhing. They're alive. Oh, okay. And as you get close, you see that they are sort of stuck in mud. All right. So I guess what I'm saying is, is this a walking situation or a climbing situation? Um, uh, about a foot and a half high. Some of them are on top of each other, but it's basically mm-hmm. like a body's a body's depth, like height from from the. It's like it's it's about you know, mm-hmm. it's there are more bodies below the bodies that you can see but there's only about one body with no, 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 no. Let the bodies hit the floor. (laughs) (laughs) I start stepping over them. One correct pink. Hey fellas. Present you the tray. (laughs) Oh, we got to start here again. I think we repeat the last, uh, (laughs) set of actions. Yeah. Sausage in South door. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, tea, tea sausage, healing. pastry, pastry. Chase Willem. Sam stays in the I mean, uh, Abel stays in the in the windmill. Uh, Ionis mm-hmm. runs away. Filnir chases after him, and you're back in the square. And the three paths uh, extend out before you. What'd you do last time? I heard somebody praying, but that was all. Just for a moment. I mean, one of us got something right. I saw a halfling on fire, and I, I, I hugged the halfling, and I felt wonderful. That sounds significant. I believe, I believe I'm going to try that again. Abel, you wanted to switch last time. Perhaps that is prudent. Grizz, grizzled man praying does sound up my alley. <laughs> does. Shall we? Have I'll fun, to... buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Any, I think it will be anything but, and I'll walk to the right. bodies. I step into the black void. Uh, Before you step in, you hear your own voice as a much younger man screaming to Tempest. Was I ever that grizzled? (laughs) (laughs) Was I ever so grizzled as I was when I was young? and, And the voice says, I just don't understand why you won't answer me. I've been asking you for years. Why don't you answer me? And there's no response and no one cares. And Phil near, you're at the line of bodies and you can see that they're stuck in mud and they're reaching up at you. And, and the one closest to you is a half elf with hair that's been burnt off his, his scalp. Uh, but he's very much alive and he reaches up and he says, help. Help me. I try to help him. And he grabs onto your hand and you can pull him. And as you pull him, he comes up from the mud. And as soon as you get him up from the mud, you see you're all standing on a dock. And you see Rella running toward you. 
and you see behind her two basilisks chasing and she runs right past you without even acknowledging you and she dives into the water and you follow her with your eyes and as she dives in you see that she turns into stone and she sinks into the lake and when you turn back around you see that on the back of the two basilisks is the shape of the elf the old elf that galwinia was in the shape of when you first met when you first met with her at the Water Davian uh, Cafe. And Despo, good shower on the other basilisk. And they're laughing there as they look down at the water where it's still rippling with from the stone of Rella. And then Rella rises up from the lake and her eyes are on fire. And she sends two jets of flame from her eyes and it slices and cauterizes both Despo and Jesus and also the Lady Sil Havind and Galwinia and Mr. Percy and the Wolf Pawson's head is disconnected from his body and ca- also cauterized and the fire goes straight through all three of you and Rella turns to look at you with her mouth open And she mouths the words, I need stronger meat. And all three of you thump to the ground. You are exhausted and you are wet. Phyllis? Abel? Huh? Jonas? Filner? Again? Again? Who's We're, this gnome? I'm Florida. looking around. Where are Where we? Where are we? You're in the middle of Lake and Hearth in the town square. You're on dirt. Uh, you can see the windmill over to your right. Uh, across the way is uh, is the is the inn and the tavern. Uh, you're actually sitting right in the place where Ionis uh, um, had the darkness cast over him. Uh, when he had his <laughs> showdown with Florin. Uh, Florin, and, can you hear me? The Abel, Abel, how'd you get back here so fast? Last thing I knew, you were walking down the center of the uh, the lake. Uh, it, it, and you look around and there are gnomes and there are elves and there are drow and there are dwarves and they're all sort of standing around. And, and it's many more people than you have ever seen in Lake and Hearth. Uh, and you even catch sight of some of the the dwarves from Monterre that are now here, um, and uh, and and you you hear something, and it's it's it sounds like a thud 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 thud, and you hear people uh, sort of getting scared. And Filnir, you smell it first, master, master, and awesome. A giant white wolf comes and stands over you and begins to lick your face. And you guys see each other and you realize that you are all covered in this pink goo all over your face uh, and your bodies. Parson, how, how long have we been gone? Oh, master. Oh, uh, I went through the chest. Did you know if you put a paw in the chest, your whole body shrinks into it? Uh, Florence said it was not going to hurt, but it and it didn't hurt. But I just came up through it. Wait, uh, no. But- get them to say something that they wouldn't say otherwise. Florence, repeat after me. Hubba bubble, boy, Hub- we're in trouble. Hubba bubble, boy, we're in trouble. Okay, I f- fellas, I think we're really here. <laughs> I, I can't imagine any predetermined script would include that line. <laughs> Pawson, did you just only just get back to Lakenhearth? Were we here before you, or have you been here some time? I, I, I've lost, I've lost track of we were how here. long it's been since we went in the water. I, we, they did the chess thing about. A quarter of a mile outside of town, in the woods. Just now? Uh, we just got back. Huh. I'll, I'll, uh, check my 
my belongings and see if I've got my my stuff. Do I have Kegaset? You have Kegaset, and it is a long sword. And I'll pull it out. Is the poem written on it? Poems written on it. And I'll make it disappear and reappear. Are, are you boys starting to see why I went up on a mountain for 20 years? <laughs> Gods, I tell you. Well, the good news is we haven't lost any time. Flon. Dear God, what's going on? And you see Felipe Madamba is like, uh, flips over on his back. And then he flips up on his feet like ninja style. And, and he says, who the shit are you? Who's he looking at? The three of you on the floor. Felipe, you do not know us. What do you mean? I said, who the shit are you? No, we heard you. We just this don't is not understand. the Felipe Madamba we have encountered before. Who are you? I am Felipe Madamba. Who are you? Does okay. So my sword is now a long sword with the poem written on it. Does it still look like Quiet Dark? It does look like Quiet Dark. So it's like blades, kind of invisible. Yep. Okay. So it doesn't look like those properties have changed. It nope. doesn't look like Felipe got what he wanted. Well, I don't know. He seems like he's feeling pretty good. Well, but Felipe wanted to release his buddy from Kegaset yeah. and potentially take his place. I guess he could have gotten what he wanted. Or they traded places. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> What's the last thing you remember, Madamba? Well, I'm not sure I ought to let you be the one asking these questions, human. Let me ask you this. Whose side are you on? I'm going to look over at Florin. Has he been with you the whole time? Who? Who are you talking about? Madamba. The gnome. He's been... We found you all, all four of y'all on the ground here. Look, he's got the pink shit on him, just like you do. I'm going to show him Kegaset. Does this look familiar? Where did you get that, half-elf? I'm not quite sure how to ask you this. Are you familiar with this blade? Were you once a part of it? They tried to put me in there. Bastard elf said it was going to be for the good of, of the Moonbrook peoples. I didn't let her do it. I think perhaps your will was not a factor in the decision. What is your name? My name is Felipe Madamba. No, it's not. I'm the king of the Owlwood. We're going to make war against the the bastards of Monterre, trying to take over this whole valley. Oh, you've you've misplaced your hatred. I think some time has passed, and you have not felt it. I think the real Felipe Madamba has traded places with you, and somehow you have taken his name, but not his spirit. He was a great healer. He wanted to show himself from time to time. Bit of a performer, if you will. I'll pull out Kegaset and I'll talk to it and I'm not sure how to do it. And Philippe and you know, Filnir is not sure how to address Felipe within it, assuming Felipe is within it. But he's gonna talk to Kegaset and basically say Felipe. Yes. If you are in the blade, you wanted to be able to show yourself. Show us now that you are there. Show us what you can do. For your wish seems to have been granted by Ehi. And the flippy in front of you is like, is he okay? <laughs> we've 
we've experienced some weird things. Half elf, I am right here. <laughs> he says. <laughs> Perhaps I am wrong. Perhaps you are who you say you are, but you are not the Felipe that we know. <laughs> You're not making any sense. Not to you. Madame, but what is the last thing you remember? You are here in the town of Lakenhearth among our people. How did you arrive? Where did you come from? What part of what 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 part of Gilbrain is Lakenhearth? Where were you yesterday? Yesterday we handed the bastards of Montaire their greatest defeat in a hundred years. And they they fled back to the mountain. And we knew they would come with more troops. And so my priestess took us to the the temple of Ehi. And she said that she could give us the greatest weapon that had ever been wielded on all of Gilbrain. And then she told me I had to occupy it. And I said no. And then I was shunted out here with you all. Where are my troops? Do you know someone named Kegaset? That's my elven priestess. I think we've been tricked. Oh, fellas. We've been tricked. By whom? By Kegaset. I, I believe, uh, I believe we are meeting Felipe Madamba for the first time. Perhaps you're right. Well, I have a quite good memory. And I can tell you that I have never met you three. You look like a Monteran, but I, I know enough to know that there are plenty enough wise Monterans who are not in with the bastard Silhavines who, are, who have recently taken over there. You, human, you must be a, one of the Faerunis who have come to help us. Welcome. How does Madamba look? Does, he, does his body look younger? Looks about the same, to be perfectly honest with you, but it looks, it's, it's toned maybe more. Uh, um, you know, he, uh, it's really hard to tell how old a gnome is from just look at him. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, but he does look, I mean, he is certainly more spry than he was before. Phil near. Don't yep. speak to Madamba's spirit in the blade. Speak to Kegaset. Kegaset. Can you hear me? It is Filnir, wielder of Quiet Dark. Hello, Half Elf. Welcome. Welcome to where? To what? Well, you're welcome to wield me. I know you've been faced with this before, but I promise you this. I know to keep my mouth shut. Were you posing yourself as Felipe Madamba? For nearly 300 years, I was, yes. 300 years? Yes, nearly. That is how long this gnome has been trapped. You freed him. I wish that I could have given us both freedom, but it seemed like he deserved it more than I. It was not what Ehi said, or well, not what Ehi granted. I am glad that you were able to achieve at least part of what you wanted. I am too, and I believe that I believe that the Felipe Madamba who is there might be of help to you, assuming he can rally troops he does not know <laughs> yes and perhaps put aside grudges he holds from centuries ago the gnomes of old do not have kind feelings toward humans that is true um, but the good news is the gnomes of today do not have good feelings toward humans either and you seem to have made a few of them as friends as well that we can manage but an overall hatred for Montaigne may be more difficult. We will work on it, but I'm happy to hear advice, should you have any. I will mostly keep my mouth shut. I believe I am 
I believe I am going to be able to free myself from this blade within your lifetime. Well, I suppose that's not a problem for me. Blades come and go. So if there's something I can do to help, and it is within my power, I shall try to accommodate. You are a good man. Is there anything you can tell me about this Felipe that will help put him on our side? His panther yet lives. 300 years later, it's quite a panther. His panther is in the Gilbrain Wilds and was never a panther at all. He has been animated. I see. And that might make him feel rather at home here in, in the conflict of today. I shall take that into consideration. Thank you, Kikaset. Be well, Filnir. So you guys heard all of that, but only Filnir's part. <laughs> 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 and Felipe Madamba is not having it. He is like looking around, doesn't quite, he's not quite making things out. And he looks and you see him, he spots, he spots Red Cloud Mountain. And, and you see him, he like scratches his chin and he's just like, I just, where is all the water? (laughs) Vilnir, did I hear you say 300 years? Abel, your instincts were spot on. It is not Felipe we had met. It was, in fact, Kegaset in Felipe's body. Felipe, I know you do not want to hear this, and you are more than likely going to be reluctant to believe it. But I fear your body was put into this sword, and Kegaset has felt remorse for 300 years and tried to find a way to get you out of it. And only just through our help and through the blessing of Ehi, has she traded places with you. And you are now back in your body. And it is Kegaset within this blade. And again, it will be hard to believe, but 300 years has passed. Much has changed. The water levels, relations between Monter, there are fightings between the kingdoms of Hark, and a dare, and... A dare? Yes. These are kingdoms you may not know. 300 years is a long time. Hark. He just kind of looks off and says, Hark. But she did tell me your panther... Wait, may still... Wait, Bobby Hark? (laughs) (laughs) Robert Hark, yes. Little guy. Never winter. It, perhaps he was, but 300 years ago, I was not alive to meet him. Strangely enough, there have been a number of Robert Harks since then. Yes. Of many uh, sizes, statures, and potentially genders. Oh my god. <laughs> this is weird. So, wait. Buddy, you don't know the half of it. Wait. Let me get this straight. You're telling me. It's been 300 years. Yep. They didn't blow up Monterre City from the center of the mountain. Nope. (laughs) There's no more water. I mean, there's water. Well, I mean. Yeah, in wells. He's. (laughs) I mean, he's looking around. He's like, I like. He says. Uh, human, I, this is my land. I know that mountain. And he points over, he says, and I know those hills. And I know over there. And that way is the Owlwood. That means we're 
in the middle of the Queen's Lake. If we were, say, 20 feet higher, would we be at the shoreline? I don't know. I, I don't have my bearings here. And Kegaset? Kegaset actually put me in a blade? And she still lost the war? <laughs> <laughs> there is much history that has not been passed on. Well, tell me this. Did they at least kill those mountain dwarves? Those traitors? Which dwarves would those be? I mean... I look around at the dwarves that are standing around listening to this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there is a small crowd of people uh, um, mm -hmm. forming, but Florin is sort of Are we still all away. covered in pink goo? Oh, still covered in pink goo. Yeah. Totally. So, yeah, like, when we plasma. gesture for emphasis, we're, like, flicking, yeah. flicking oh, bits yeah. of goo, goo at each other? Yes. Straight out of Ghostbusters. Yeah, Absolutely. Come on. Ghostbusters, that's right. Jonas, <laughs> Jonas is clean. Yeah, of course. Uh -huh. Already. Instantly. <laughs> He's just listening and prestidigitating and just wiping it all off. Yeah. Just wait for Slimer. That's right. We'll be back. <laughs> All right, Madamba, you got to listen now and you got to listen good. A lot of things have changed in the last 300 years. But all that you thought was yours is no longer. You are a guest in this time. And you would do well to take your bearings before rushing off into any rash action. I, I know this must be... Strange to be a traveler in your own home, but that's what you well that's what Kegaset has cursed you to. So he, he he looks around at the humans here and and it's and and the other races of creatures. Yeah, the reincarnated the reincarnated <laughs> random here, races yeah. of humans. And and um he says And yet the dream seems to be alive here. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand how Monterre can still stand. And that dwarf and that elf, and that looks like a dark elf from down below. And you half elf, how did, how did you even survive childhood? There is much to discuss, Felipe. Some of those that stand before us have only been in these bodies for you know, moments really in their lifetimes hey, he started to take a step back his wait Kegaset reincarnated you all into these bodies Kegaset was on our side in a battle that was won oh, and she brought back many of those that had recently fallen some of us I, I was born in this one but but Felipe <laughs> Yes. What is your dream? Well, my dream was the dream of the elves. My dream was the dream of the mountain dwarves before they were corrupted. It's that we could have a land where there could be a city. A grove where all people were welcome. Where you didn't have to be born of the top crust fiber of humans in order to have wealth or you didn't have to be an elf in order to do magic we were banished to the forests it took away our homeland and i think that once the moonbrook elves realized what was coming in this jewel in the sea they finally got a heart, or at least I thought they did until one of them shoved me into a sword, apparently for 300 years. And I, I go over and I clasp him on the shoulder and it makes a big squelching, you know, and I send, <laughs> send goof -like. Dude is solid. I just want to let you know when you hit him <laughs> on the back, like you sort of, exp you sort of hold back a little bit because he's a gnome. And it feels as though he has been like drilled down on poles deep into the earth. 
Like <laughs> it would be very hard to move him. Madame, but many things have changed in 300 years. But the dream is alive. The dream is alive. Well, tell me this. Is the castle still standing in Owlwood? Felipe, the dream is alive, but we may have to fight for it. I just want to let you know. I can tell I like you. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't rush into things cock strong and head sure. <laughs> I'm a planner. I take my time. And if I don't know we're going to have victory, I don't do anything. I don't lead men into battle without knowing for a fact we're going to win. And I don't follow men into battle. I lead them. Felipe, we're going to have a lot to talk about, but I can't tell you how great it is to finally talk to somebody who feels like they know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to walk over to Florn uh, and ask Florn if there's a place that's, you know, a, a, where the quickest rise from here is to try to find a place that would be about 20 feet higher than where we're standing in natural surroundings, not like the top of a building. But Shit, 20 feet, 20 feet. I mean... Well, you know, we're, we're, we're down in the valley, uh, top of the valley, actually where the, where the, where the river comes in is, uh, it's actually smack dab in Breentown. There must be something closer. I mean, hills, we could go south. How far? Is it far? <sighs> you gotta go through that. You gotta go through the woods where it's, it's not always safe. That's where we had all those Durgers attack from. But, oh, right. so, but yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not far, 10 miles. And you could head your way up and hell, you know, you know, the tower, you know, the tower ruins where the, where the, where the blue, the blue thing and the tree is. Oh, fuck. That's yes. 40, that's 40, 50 feet up. Are you saying this close enough for Felipe to hear you, by the way? Uh, I mean, I guess it depends on where, how close Florin was standing to us. But, I mean, Florin yeah. is interested in what's going yeah. on here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'm just looking for a place where I could take Felipe to potentially get bearings if he's, you know, walked around the old lake, assuming the water level. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm using the assumption that the water level was about 20 feet higher um, at that point. So that's what that's what Filner is really sort of trying to get at is like, is there a place that's maybe, yeah. you know, not like, you know, not not a half day's hike away, but you know, maybe there isn't. Yeah. No, um, it, probably a half day's hike at least now on Pawson, you know, quicker, uh, f you know, sure, flying but it's not, quicker, not like movie movie scene montage where it's just like, whoop. All right. We're just there. Like, look, yeah. look, let me show you. We're just here. Look, this, don't you yeah. see now? Yeah. 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 Wait, there's been a lot of strange things going on, but, uh, I, Look over at Jonas. <laughs> I think we won. I did. Did we? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know half of what has happened in the last day. If you are indeed Felipe Madamba, I'd like to extend the hand of friendship. And I'll hold my hand out to shake his. And he sort of gives you a bit of a side look and he says, uh, any Monterran who comes to their right mind and, and pushes aside the yoke of authoritarianism that happens up there on that mountain is a friend of mine. And he shakes your hand. And he says, Felipe Madamba, good to meet you. To whom am I speaking with? <laughs> <laughs> Why it's Mr. Jonah Silverwing? <laughs> I just, I just look at Abel. I shake my head. I cast Prestidigitation on uh, Felipe Bedamba, and I say, "Sir, I am the descendant. 
I am Ionis Silhavind, and I swear to you, times have changed. We stand a king. He is practically breaking your hand with his little bitty fingers. I, 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 <laughs> um, I told I told you that it's. T- I understand my family has a lot to atone for, but I. Felipe, he is a man of of moral and intellectual strength. <laughs> he he reaches not, up, not not physical and. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's the word. I'm, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, <laughs> actual uh, strength. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he is. You know, he stands about two and a half feet tall, and he's squeezing your hand, and he pulls your hand all the way to the ground. And, and so your, your face is now down at about what? Yeah. Three feet high. Like, you know, he's, he's pulling you down and, uh, and he reaches up and touches your face. And with his little hands, you realize he's only got three fingers on his left hand. Hmm. And, and he sort of holds your face and he, he says, uh, But you use magic. Tell me. I'm assuming your father was a Silhavind. Indeed. What family was your mother? She was a Maroud. And they still live? As far as I know, yes. The magical de Maroods. Still alive to this day. They didn't run them out, I guess. And he starts to shake your hand vigorously, and he says, Any offspring of Stefanos de Marode can't be all bad. Good. Thank you, sir. Uh, I believe you and I have a lot to talk about. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like we should do one of those little uh, comic book asterisks here. Like for more on this, see Mountains Premium Campaign, Mountain yeah. City Mayhem. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, those Maroads are pretty weird. <laughs> Just be honest about it. They're pretty weird folk. Um, yeah. So, Fleep and Madamba is here with you all. Uh, the town folk are going back to their homes and hovels hovels and uh and it is clear that some of them are now facing the uh difficult reality that comes along with being in a much shorter body than they were before for doing things like cooking at their normal height kitchens um uh holding up their bows which they, you know, used to use for hunting. Like there's, there is some bit of realization now setting in that they are, that it's not going to just be all good. Um, <laughs> uh, and you can see this is sort of playing out in, uh, in, in doorways where people can't reach the lock and, uh, and in the town square. <laughs> I can only imagine like the marriage where one partner comes back and looks completely different. To yeah. The other one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I you assume that's playing out in the in the town even as you speak. Well, at the end of the day, you know, it's loved ones that make a hovel a home. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> um, Florn leads you to uh, to your windmill and says, uh, "Gentlemen, I think you ought to get a rest. Uh, we'll put Felipe up in the in the tavern." And uh, I think we ought to talk tonight about what we what we do next. But perfectly honest with you, I can't hardly stand up myself. Yes, I think rest would be the best thing. Do me a favor. Yeah. Don't come in with sausages, pastry, and tea. <laughs> <laughs> in the morning <laughs> we'll come to you okay 
Sounds good. And you guys make it back to your windmill, and it is exactly as you left it, uh, with the exception that there are a few books that weren't there before that are wrapped up in string with a note that just says, for Ionis. Um, <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> and and, uh, and Abel, even though you still have a hammock that's tied from the banister of the stairs to the other side of the windmill, it's got fur on it, and it's clearly been reinforced with some kind of uh, canvas or burlap on the, on the throughout the middle, and it is... Um, got two wooden dowels at either end, so it holds its shape a bit more than uh, just a sack would. Um, and uh, and and Phil near there is a there is a uh, uh, a four poster um, never winter bed that is also there on the first floor. Um, other than that, it is exactly as you left it weeks ago. You are all level 11. Hey. <laughs> all right. I start stripping off. I can't wait to get all this shit off me. I feel like I've been wearing it for a year. <laughs> uh, Ionis, a little help with the goo. You mind? I, I, I just begin patting everybody. I'm already feeling better. <laughs> what is this? I, I, I give it a little lick. Just a, no. It's, it's kind of salty. It's kind of salty. Um, uh, it, a little, it's a little briny, and it and it does some it does of, some kind of whale blubber. I don't know. It's also it's also got the um, it's definitely got blood in it. Uh, it's 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 um, it has that irony sort of taste to it when you when you lick it. Um, listen, I, Phil near. Yes. I can't even say why this occurred to me or what it might be for, but um, take one of your little flasks and bottle some of this stuff up for before we get rid of all of it. Okay. I'll this is some kind of... I mean, it's gross. <laughs> 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 but this has got to be some kind of concentrated essence of Ehi or somehow re- retains her spirit I don't know I feel like we may we may want that at some point while they're saying all that I'm just mumbling myself most useful cantrip I could have ever picked up been so <laughs> dirty in my life <laughs> traveling with these people good goodness <laughs> uh, I'm like, you did such a good job. Even my loincloth is clean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm actually washing my hands. <laughs> <laughs> I said the cloth for my loins. <laughs> yes, yes. Jonas. Yes, thank you. Thank you. You did a much. great job on it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Do you read the note that has, that's, that's on the books, by the way? Uh, yeah, I mean, if we're taking a moment to <laughs> Say <no>. sit down. Say <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no. Uh, I, I just, just start flipping I just through rip it. Yeah, I just rip the note <laughs> off and throw it in the trash, and then I start reading it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, no I, uh, yeah, I, I sit down on the bed, uh, ready, to, ready to rest, but excited to have some literature. And uh, I, I look at the note. Uh, God damn, I'm so tired. That guy is so horny for books. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the note is, uh, written in Mr. Percy's hand. Oh, and, uh, and it just says, um, uh, to the very best master a man could ever have, um, please accept these books in exchange for my contract that I had signed with your family. Um, I will not work for you anymore, but I will be your friend. Yours, Reginald, Asseet, Percy. <laughs> asshole. Yeah, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I look over. I'm looking over at Jonas, Jonas's shoulder. Like, Wait, is that an option? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was an option. <laughs> Can I just get you a couple more books? <laughs> I believe I, I believe it is not an option, nor is it an option for Mr. Percy. I can't, I can't yeah, that guy's going to get an ear full and a few <laughs> other things full if uh, that note is any indication. <laughs> Mr. Percy, this is this is Ionis. I just got back. Where are you? What's happening? Um, master, uh, I am I am with my lady Galwinia. Um, do you think we could have this conversation later? We're having it now. We're having it now. He says I have to have it now, my lady. Just hold, hold, hold fast. Hold fast. I know. Hold fast. I apologize. I I assume he did read it. I assume that's why he's calling. <laughs> Are you in Lake and Hoth? Are you safe? I am in Lake and Hoth. I'm not going to tell you what room in the tavern I am in. I have been sworn <laughs> not to tell you. I'm telling him I'm not telling him. That's what I just said. <laughs> I just give a big sigh. I will speak to you later. Thank you. Very well, mm, friend. And I lay down and I, I lay down and I go to sleep. Okay. And uh, Florn walks into your room with a golden tray with sausages, a pastry. You motherfucker. I'm only kidding. I'll be you bitch. And thus ends episode <laughs> one of season three, episode 53 uh, of the Dungeon Dads podcast. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, those puzzles in the beginning were great. That was, that was oh, wild. Man. Oh, that. man. <laughs> did you really? So did you really like those? <laughs> I did. Because I, I liked them, them in so far as it really... Um, Produced the emotional response that was intended, right? <laughs> like, I really felt the frustration and despair of the characters yes. 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 in yes. that moment. But that that's all good. hot pod for the bonus episode. Yeah, hot pod for the bonus episode. Oh, welcome what back a, to what season. A, a new season, baby. Ooh, man. <laughs> new season, a new Felipe Madamba. Yeah, new Felipe man. Madamba. Awesome. The same old Felipe Madamba from 300 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, I bet, I bet he says some. Uh, he's got some language that's not PC. Oh, in these times. Oh, 100. percent I'm just trying to decide how to make it work. Um, uh, I think it's gonna be more, uh, more. No, no, Uncle Felipe, that's a slur now. <laughs> yeah, gonna, yeah, I was gonna say it's gonna be more Uncle Jeb than Captain America for sure. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh man! Well, thanks everybody for coming back and for staying with us for uh, the beginning of season three. Um, hit up that Patreon, give us a five and a scribe. You know what to do. Yeah, and if you're a new listener and you started at season three, wow. you probably understood nothing. <laughs> wow. But if you've no. made it this far, I mean, we, listen we to highly the season one and two recap episode that we plan to create at some yeah, point. Maybe yeah, we'll, maybe we'll make one of those for you. Otherwise, you know, it's a lot to listen to, but it's worth it. Yeah, totally and, worth uh, it. We got a ton of bonus content on the Patreon, as mentioned, where you can get the entire backlog for very little money, plus an entire additional campaign that Sam runs. And um, great and then, merch on our merch store. We got That's merch right. on the merch store. We got brand new branding, courtesy of Brian Weiss with Play RPG and Company. And you know what? Don't forget to follow us on social. Uh, now on Instagram, also on Twitter, both Dungeon Dads Pod and Dungeon Dads Podcast can't, on Facebook. I, I can't believe we're on Instagram. We're on Instagram. <laughs> and you know what? And I feel like I'm else? 20 again. <laughs> look, look, I not me because when I was 20, there was no such thing as Instagram. <laughs> and, when I was okay, 20, maybe, there was no such thing as Friendster. Um, and and that space. baby disappeared quickly. I used ICQ. That's yeah. what I used. Uh-oh. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Yeah. I was I was searching for things on Alta Vista. There oh go. yeah, yeah. And for more I was stories using about how old we are, <laughs> who had a GeoCities page? To our bonus I did. Episodes. I did. Yeah. All right, everybody. Toodaloo. All right. Toodaloo. 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 Let's go find all that extra good stuff. Thanks for listening. Chubba doo ba 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 doo ba